Did you know that you can learn from vast amounts of data and generate new content and patterns characteristics of the original data? Generative AI are algorithms that can create seemingly real, authentic material from the training data such as text, photos and audios. Hello everyone, welcome to today's session on Generative AI. In today's session, we are going to talk about what is Generative AI and look at some insights. But before we go ahead, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel to never miss out on any updates. Also to stay notified for the further updates, please hit the bell icon. And to know about the OpenAI ChatGPT training course, please check out the link given in the description down below. So let's get ahead guys. Let's talk about what is Generative AI. A Generative AI is basically a type of AI system capable of generating text, images and other media in response to prompts. The beginning of Generative AI begins with a prompt, which could be a word, image or a video, etc. Then in response to the request, Several AI algorithms return fresh contents. We have three categories that can be used to group the skills of a generative AI. So here we have the skill sets, which is for generative AI, which is used for creating ideas and contents. Also in terms of generating fresh original outputs using a variety of media like a video or a commercial, or even a novel protein with antibacterial capabilities. And then moreover, increasing effectiveness and accelerating manual or repetitive operations like email writing, coding, or document summaries. Next, we see what are the types of generative AI models. So firstly, we need to know that most of the generative AI algorithms are constructed on top of foundation models that have also been self-supervisedly trained on enormous amount of unsupervised data to find the underlying patterns for a variety of tasks. Here are some examples of generative AI, which can be ChatGPT, which can also be called as Generative Pre-trained Transformer. It is an autoregressive model that has been pre-trained on a corpus of text to produce excellent natural language writing. GPT has been made adaptable to do a range of language activities, including question answering, summarizing, and language translation. Then we talk about DALI. DALI also is a deep learning model which were created by OpenAI to produce digital images from prompts or natural language description. DALI makes use of GPT variant that has been altered to produce images. Then we talk about StyleGN, for which the latest version is StyleGN3. StyleGN has been used for a number of fields including fashion, design and the arts. Additionally, it has been used to create artificial data for the training of machine learning models in disciplines like categorization, and object detection. Then next up guys, let's talk about some of the advantages of generative AI. Every aspect of the organization can benefit greatly from the application of generative AI. So here are some of the advantages, which is in terms of automating the labor intensive process of content creation. It also helps in lowering the effort required to reply to emails, which increases the responsiveness to particular technical technique and creates accurate portraits of people making a logical story out of difficult facts, also streamlining the production of material in specific style. Going ahead, let's talk about some of the generative AI limitations. So the numerous drawbacks of generative AI are starkly illustrated by its early implementations. Some of the restrictions here are as follows. So here are the issues which state that it doesn't always tell where the content came from. That means the source is not defined, correct? It is more challenging to spot false information when it sounds very realistic. So various controversy in terms of ChatGPT have come into picture due to which it sounds realistic but they are false information. Next is in terms of understanding how to adjust for the novel circumstances, this could be challenging. Results can hide biases. So these were quite some limitations of generative AI. Now let's talk about some applications about generative AI. So these are the five most fundamental applications of generative AI, which includes your art and design, data augmentation, entertainment, in terms of drug discovery, and also in terms of personalization and recommendations. So talking about art and design, artists and designers leverage generative AI models to create unique, visually appealing, and innovative pieces of art, ranging from paintings to fashion designs. When we talk about in terms of entertainment, Generative AI has been employed in creating music or writing screenplays and even designing video game levels 
offering some avenues for human machine collaboration in terms of creative process. Then when we talk about in terms of data augmentation in machine learning, generative AI can generate additional training data, particularly useful for the available data in scars or which is imbalance. Next we see about drug discovery. So generative AI models can accelerate drug discovery by generating new molecular structures with desired properties, significantly reducing the time and cost of traditional drug development process. Lastly, when we talk about in terms of personalization and recommendations, by learning user preferences and generating relevant content, generative AI can enhance user experience across various platforms from social media feeds to e-commerce recommendations. So these were quite few applications about generative AI. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching the video and like always, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!